Get you through my morning every day. Every morning. Ladies and gentlemen, Adelaide's Jody and Hazy on Nova. Ah, there you go. Welcome to the podcast. Love that, that you've chosen us as your podcast that you listen to religiously each and every day. It's very presumptuous of me to say that. Mm. But anyway, here we are. Um, text for Tay-Tay, the code word. We're going to tell you what it is very, very soon. But first, please cast your earlobes on some of the text messages that the Russian hack of the Port Adelaide iced tea system has revealed between you and the players. It's truly disturbing stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Major bombshell at the Port Adelaide Football Club yesterday with the baffling news that the Russians, who had previously targeted state government agencies and they went the public sector, and now they're going the sacrosanct mm. Port Adelaide Football Club. Oh, how dare they? How very dare they? How very dare they? <laughs> Sorry. Um, they put out a press release yesterday. It said Port Adelaide is investigating claims online that a Russian ransomware group has hacked its internal IT system, but the power of stress that members' information has not been affected. Wow. Mm. Do do they know this is the place where Chris Davies works? (laughs) (laughs) He's the most intimidating man on the planet. Good luck, Russian hackers, when you come face to face with (laughs) it. Because I know who's going to (laughs) win. It's quite alarming, though. It, it, it's weird. It's just very, very strange. And they say that they access finance documents, um, account movements, balance sheets, tax information, that sort of stuff. Um, but it's come to light also that the Russians are just trying to solve all the mysteries of yeah. the Port Adelaide Football Club. Yeah, right. Okay. Mm. So maybe there's a lot to learn yeah. from what's going with the rushing hacking. Well, maybe the Russians can help them out. Yeah, maybe. In a sense. Mm. I mean, they've already sort of half released a report, which is very, very interesting. Mm. A lot to be learnt. Mm. Number one, um, they reckon they've seen a genuine medical report about Travis Boak that states <laughs> he's not even human. <laughs> he's he, AI. He, he may be AI. <laughs> Because the Russians are like, how can you be, what, 35-odd but look yeah. like a 21-year-old and still somehow get younger? Oh, oh I know. That doesn't the... make sense in terms of human genetics. Oh, I know the answer to that. Red Bull. Red Bull. Simple. Of course. That's why Travis Boak uh, flies around all those places. Mm. Um, second thing they found was um, they reckon that uh, they've seen some bills, particularly for match day, and they reckon that Kenny's Coke Zero consumption on game day is just completely out of control. <laughs> is it? Genuinely draining the club. <laughs> <laughs> Just cans and cans of the oh, stuff. Oh, dear. Mm. Mm. And finally, uh, upon seeing all sorts of uh, confidential stuff, they actually sent Connor Rosie a friend request to Russian hackers because I've seen his next contract. <laughs> yeah. And they want to hang out with him. Yeah. Well, I've learned as well that the Russians haven't just hacked into their IT system. They've also accessed text messages, which wow. is very, very alarming. And I hope they don't come to public light. Oh, gosh. For your sake. Oh, because because I happen to get my hands on some of the text messages that have been exchanged. And one of them was from you, yep. Jason Horn Francis. <laughs> it simply says, I love your long flowing locks. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> there was another one from you to Connor Rosie. Yeah. And it was an audio clip, actually. Mm. And, and, and I don't know how Connor reacted when you sent him this. <laughs> yeah, he didn't write back. <laughs> and then there was one more text exchange, which I found really interesting, and it was from Jason Horn Francis to Connor Rosie saying, is this peanut texting you as well? <laughs> <laughs> Have you blocked him as well? <laughs> All right, Swifties, uh, this is it. If you missed the code word on Friday to get yourself on the standby list to see her in Melbourne, sold out, concert, flights, combination, all there. Get ready to text this little word through. Yeah, once upon a time, a few mistakes ago, there's a clue. It's trouble. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Text line is like 4 I mean, you got there in the end, but that blank look was extraordinary. What if you could book your hotel now and choose to pay when you get there? With thousands of flexible booking options in select stays, you're only a what if away from your next holiday. Book on the what if app. What if it's Aussie for travel. Here's what you're waking up to, Adelaide. News. In the news today. Breaking news. Breaking news. What's in the news today? Your most snooze news. Very, very overwhelming waking up to a plethora of information. That's why we break things down for you into three separate news stories that you need to know this morning. Let's go to Abby in the newsroom first up. Good morning. So if you are heading into the city for your commute this morning, you might want to leave a little bit earlier. Um, We are counting down to the Adelaide 500, which means road closures. We love that. Uh, so it's east of the city that's impacted. Decatur Terrace, um, East Terrace, Hutt Street, 
Flinders Street, Wakefield Street, all all through there is all affected. So most of them are closed off. Um, so if you are heading into the city or this way um, up to the city, then you need to leave a little bit earlier. A lot of frustrated motorists this morning, no doubt. Yeah, but it's progress and yeah. it's something that we want. So yeah. if you want something that's really, really shiny, maybe you could go through just a little bit of pain. Yeah, okay. So when people are doing roadworks, yep. if I was someone working on roadworks and I was doing something and I'm toiling away and a motorist drove past and sort of gave me the bird or got frustrated, yeah. I think I'd throw my shovel at them. Would you? Yeah. Oh, it's really mature. It's a bit very, aggressive very, for a Friday morning. Yeah, but seriously. Can't. Like, people, they're there, they're not there. Sometimes they sort of don't do much, but they're there as a whole trying to fix the place. Okay. okay. Well, that's Sometimes, sometimes they're just standing around talking with each other. <laughs> also true, Abby. <laughs> also very true. <laughs> News. Newsy. Leading all the news services last night was this extraordinary story of Dr. Lisa Lyons. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to try and explain it. It's very, very complicated. So basically what has happened, she was married to her husband, right? Uh, his name is Jonathan Horton. He got into an argument with a man who was living with the couple at the time. His name is Zachariah Bruckner, okay? So they got into a fight. Zachariah hit Miss Lyon's husband with an axe. He became a quadriplegic, right? And so then they alleged that the victim um, shot him. So then he got accused <laughs> of attempted murder. Does this make any of it make sense? I know it's very, very complex. What the hell is going on? So, <laughs> so basically, she was having an affair with a guy who she wanted to kill her husband. However, um, he then. It's come to light now that he actually shot himself in the leg to make it look like the other guy attacked him. Right, okay. I know, I can't. I, I don't know how to make any more sense of it. Anyway, she's been arrested yep. um, overseas in the little Pacific nation of Palau and she'll come back to Adelaide and face court. And also her alleged lover will um, face charges now mm. too of attempted murder. Okay. <sighs> I mean, I'm with you, so I didn't excited. really hear any of those words, particularly after you said Lisa Lyons. And for those at home who follow The Simpsons, remember Lisa Lionheart was the replacement <laughs> doll for Malibu Stacy that Lisa tried to create, didn't quite come off. But uh, okay. thanks, Judge. News. <laughs> news, 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 news. <laughs> I'll round it out with some sports news. Aussies are in the World Cup, an eighth World Cup final. Congratulations. Oh. Quite tight as well against South Africa. Mm. So it smashed the South Africans early, but then David Miller scored a ton, rescued them. They put on 212. And in Australia, uh, 7 for 215 off 47 and a half overs. They won by three wickets. Mm -hmm. But, and I'm going to say this because usually when I say outrageous things like this, they just do not come true. Uh -huh. This is absolutely tailor-made and set up for India to win. Isn't it? And it's also set up for <laughs> Virat Kohli to score a big giant 100 and yeah. be the hometown hero. Yeah. Because I've said that, hopefully it doesn't happen. But yeah. boy, oh boy, Indy will go in as a red-hot favourites on Sunday night. Who needs to score runs from the Aussies to get there? All their batsmen, I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> Well, no one scored runs tonight, which is nice because Glenn Maxwell didn't score. Yeah. I mean, Steve Smith got a bit of a start. Travis Head was very good. He had 60-odd. 60 but if we can get uh, somewhat of a score out of the big show again, mm. like he did a couple of uh, days ago, then hold them in very good stead, Jones. Mm, okay. Mm. Um, when's that final? Sunday Sunday. Night. Sunday night, so you're going to be... Oh, God, okay. Well, you'll be grumpy Monday morning, won't you? Because you won't well, have had any sleep. No, I watched a bit of it last night, actually. Woke up at about 2.30 and I thought, oh, so I got the phone out and had a bit of a look. Oh, mm. some sleep, mate. You've got, yeah. a, you've got a newborn. I know. <laughs> but he was up as well. We are both watching it. <laughs> <laughs> he was furious that Glenn Maxwell got out so easily. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that's a post at Snooze News. The 6.15 Vending Machine Quiz. Your turn to talk, Joe. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the 6.15 vending machine. We have three questions for you. You get the third one right, then you get a crack at all the prizes, and she's jam-packed this morning. Um, we've already given out the first que question. Who voices Meg Griffin on Family Guy? So let's go to Linda from Sterling. Good morning, Linda. Oh, hello. How are you going? We're so good. How are you? Good, thank you. Very uh, well. What's, uh, what's coming up on the weekend? You excited? Oh, uh, just kids' sport, that sort of activity. Oh, no, no, yeah, classic. Yeah. What are we talking uh, cricket? Uh, uh, rowing. Rowing? Rowing. Okay. Oh, that's an early start, isn't it? Oh, remember the, hey, remember the awesome foursome? Oh, yes. Long yeah. time ago. Goulburn Valley Snacks. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the guys with the face of Goulburn oh, Valley no. Snacks. Yeah. Oh, gosh. Yeah. I don't think my daughter would know anything about those people. <laughs> no, possibly not. All right, Linda, first question. Who voices Meg Griffin on Family Guy? 
I don't know. <laughs> oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh dear. Enjoy, oh, well. enjoy that 4 a.m. start tomorrow enjoy, morning. Yeah, right. early kickoff. Yeah, yeah. Isn't it? Adriana from Prospect. Hello. Good morning. Please tell me you know who voices Meg Griffin on Family Guy. Um, Mila Kunis. Spot on. Griffin Regenish. Hi, Dad. It's me. Just wanted you to know I got here safe. And sound? Yes, Dad. And sound. Oh, good. The sound is what concerns me. Blew my mind when I first found out That's it was Mila amazing. Kunis. Yeah. But now, <clears throat> excuse me, now that you know... It sounds exactly oh, like yeah. it, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, spot on. When you know, you know, right? But how could you not know until someone tells you? Oh, oh strange, anyway. Hey, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> you had a question number two. Who is headlining the Velo Adelaide 500 here in a week's time? Um, Robbie Williams. Yeah, he is. Oh. I just want to feel real love. A bit of angels happening a little bit later on, yeah. potentially. Potentially, oh, My gosh, I'm almost locking you in for a win for I Battle know, of the Bangers. I know. Sorry about that. Adriana, you get this question right and you get a crack at the vending machine. What TV show is this theme song for? Oh, Adriana, give it a crack. Here we go. We're running out of time. Um, is it... Uh, no. Oh, no. Oh. Thank you so much for playing. Lee from Gawler. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Lee, do you know what this is the theme song for? Oh, yes, I've heard it. Is it all together now? Oh, no, my gosh. No, not, Lee. What is going on? Matt. Matthew Craigmore, do you know what this theme song is from? No, I don't. Oh. <laughs> Oh, no. Julia, do you know what this theme song's for? Of course, it's the office. Oh, oh nice. Well done, Julia. Just sweeping well in. Have very Julia. Stephen Bradbury of you. Congratulations. Beautiful. Hey, I just need a letter between A and C, please. A. Yep, A and a number between two and six. Two. Two. A2. Like the milk. Oh, yes. That's good for your belly. Oh. Lactose freezer? Oh, I think so. Yeah. Something like that. Here we go. Okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> <laughs> Slight hiccup with a vending machine. That's all right. That's all right. Weekend kicked off last night for the 6.15 vending machine. Okay. Thursday night, uni night. Yes. Oh, that's good. You've won tickets to Cheese Fest this weekend. Oh, brilliant. Oh, awesome. Thank you. Well done, Julia. Julia. Oh, I hope you're not lactose intolerant. Otherwise, <laughs> that's going to be a very ordinary outing. Just a bit. Oh. <laughs> Are you actually? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be worth it. Oh, dear. Oh, you get to go on Saturday and Sunday is going to be a big old mess. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Julia. Cheese Fest is back, the most snackable weekend in SA. It's this weekend in Rundle Park. Get your tickets from cheesefest.com.au. Oh, Congratulations. Dear. You've won Cheese Fest Sorry. tickets. I'm lactose intolerant. Yeah. Congratulations. <laughs> Oh, also, nice. commiserations to Julia's partner who has to deal with the fallout on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Snoop Dogg news. Snoop Dogg news. <laughs> who saw that coming? Uh, the big fella was posted on Instagram. And as we know with Snoop Dogg, he um, really, really promotes and enjoys illicit substances. <laughs> oh, there he is right now. But guess oh. what? Guess what? That's old Snoop Dogg. Oh. He posted on Instagram, after much consideration and conversation with my family, I've decided to give up smoke. Please respect my privacy at this time. <laughs> <laughs> Snoop Dogg's gone through it. <laughs> yeah. um, when he says smoke, does he mean smoking or, so- or something else? I think he means smoking uh, illicit substances in a lot of parts of this world, if you know what I mean. 0400 Strange addictions or things you had to give up. Cause yes. It's not easy. No. This would be tough for Snoop Dogg right now. I've tried to give up sugar. Oh, why? Yeah, it lasted about two weeks, I reckon. Yeah. Because I just knew that I genuinely, if I didn't get a sugar fix, particularly at night time, yeah. almost turn into a genuine junkie. Wait, you were having sugar at night? Yeah, I need like four or five biscuits with a cup of tea every single night. <laughs> oh, my God. I love that we're talking about hardcore Snoop Dogg <laughs> smoking weed at all these concerts around the world. <laughs> yeah. He's like, I had to give up my chocolate <laughs> biscuits yes. with my tea at night. Yeah, they do say that know? chocolate is as addictive as heroin. Yeah. So. Really? I'd say even more so. Have you had to give up anything? No, not really. But the chocolate thing interests me because 
um, like I'm the sort of person that just ha- needs a little bit and I'm done. Mm. But then there are people that say if they start, they have to have the whole block. Yeah. That's my mother. That is, is 100% it? me yeah. as well. She's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. You gave up uh, coffee. I did. Or caffeine in particular. Yeah, so I gave up caffeine, which was hard for me because I'm definitely a chocolate gal. Um, but, yeah, I gave up caffeine for a, a challenge, a youth opportunities challenge. So it was like a make or break thing. Yeah. Um, so caffeine for 21 days. Yeah, I tell you what was challenging about that. <laughs> The challenge for us. Yeah, yeah. Each and every morning That's when Abby wasn't having coffee. Slip a little no-dose into uh, <laughs> Abby's water every now and then. And I already and about. have bad, you know, RBF. Yeah. So yeah. it was even worse for those 21 days. Mm. Yeah. It was RBBF. It took me <laughs> It took me about three days to feel good. And then on the fourth day, I was like, yep, I'm fine. But then there was a few late nights in there and I really struggled. Yeah. That's yeah, tough. Right. Um, I've had a, quite a journey over the last sort of 12 to 18 months. Oh. I've had to give up. I probably listened too much yeah. to those around me, yeah. so I've had to cut back on that, <laughs> Yeah, which is really sort of tough. You also had to give up your clothes because you run shirtless all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Kept yeah. on my shirts on. Um, caring too much as well for others sure. and those around me, so yeah. I had to cut back on that. Yeah, That I've was noticed. a tough addiction. Yeah. Um, I had to give up donating too much to charities. Yeah, oh, of Because it was just getting yeah. out of hand. And yeah. I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't have any money for myself. Yeah. Keep giving it to others. The kids are having Vegemite sandwiches every day. Yeah, I know. Just ridiculous. Yeah. But if you Google as well, mm. strange addictions, the first thing that comes up is quite unbelievable that people have had to give up. One, consuming toilet paper. That is consuming toilet paper. <laughs> Did you, do you mean eating? Eating mm. toilet paper. Oh so well done God. if you've got over that addiction. Uh, the other one is consuming the ashes of a deceased loved one. Oh, <laughs> that's a strange addiction. <laughs> um, eating rocks. Yes, and that's uh, genuine rocks, not Dwayne Johnson. Uh, <laughs> cigarette ashes, consuming oh, cigarette ashes. No. Um, snorting talcum powder, which is quite a strange one. And finally, eating glass. The snorting talcum powder sounds like replacement oh, therapy to me. God, <laughs> exactly right. There is a there is a show called My Strange Addiction. Have you mm. ever seen it? Yeah. And this woman, I remember one where this woman was eating, you know, the stuff that comes in the middle of cushions? Yep. She was eating that. <laughs> Delicious. And it was getting to the point where the doctors were like, if you keep doing this, you're going to literally die because you, know, you are putting this substance chemicals. in your body. Oh, it's, so, it's so good. <laughs> <laughs> if you've had to beat any of those addictions, yes. and if you've got one, please text us through 0400 919 919, which are very, very strange, then maybe something like this is the absolute least of your problems. It sounds like someone's making a milkshake to me. <laughs> yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> uh, maybe after. <laughs> Jodie's Diary, love this each and every week. You just absolutely take the piss out of everyone around you. Yeah. Um, and you condense it into this little beautiful piece, beautiful production, and you call it Jodie's Diary. Yeah, I don't like the way you frame it sometimes. Like, it's it's a really cathartic exercise for me just to jot down my thoughts of what's transpired during the week. So it, it's good It's good for my mental health. Oh, so okay. If you don't like it, then it's probably in the diary. <laughs> <laughs> And this week was a bit of a musical theme because oh. you and I didn't do so well with songs and or artists. Oh, fresh hits and throwbacks. Yeah. Okay. So do you want to hit play? Here we go. <laughs> Judy's Diary. Dear Diary, well, it was Aria Week and we saw it as an opportunity to butcher both music and artists. Take it away, Wiz. IQ of three, but he can leap like a flea. Wari Kappa, Kappa Cabana. Tight shorts wrapped round a banana. <laughs> Cue the seamless segue into Chingy right there. I think we have some footage of you getting down to this song at Marble Bar or the line or something, Hazy. Yeah, right. Yeah. And then me just prancing on home alone. Yeah. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again, just wondering where it all went wrong. Because <laughs> I was wearing my big gold chains, <laughs> my, my, my fubu baggy pants. <laughs> where are you, chicks? Yeah. yeah. You went to the dentist that week and got yourself a big old gold tooth. Oh, I had grills. Yep. Yeah, I had some grills in as well. I was like, where my ladies at? <laughs> and into Robbie Williams. Greg and I got married in Bali, and this was supposed to be the song that we walked into the reception to. Yeah. Right, but it got lost in transla- translation, so they ended up playing like rock DJs. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was that so, doesn't work at all. There were so many things that were wrong about our wedding. Like the cake was completely incorrect. Uh, the ceremony, Greg didn't understand a word that was being said, so he doesn't even know if we're married yeah. or not. Wrong groom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married uh, to Katut. Yeah. <laughs> All right, it's your turn, Akon and David Guetta. And fresh hits and throwbacks like this, David, get it, Akon. Sexy chicken. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, Swifties, brace yourself for a stunning revelation from Andrew Hayes. 13. Oh, okay. Well done. Bit of meaning for 13 Bit of well. meaning for 13. Apparently it's her lucky number and she basically plans her life around the number 13 and she used to write it on her hand Do you know what? before she'd go on stage. I wonder what number Travis is, what he's playing. Uh, he's 87, isn't he? Oh, I, reckon he's, I reckon he's 87. That's not oh. a sexy number, is it? 100 minus 13, 87. Oh! We also found out that Hazy sounds like a 14-year-old girl when he does a Travis Kelsey impression. Yes. What she do? She's like, Karma is the guy in the cheese coming home to me. Yes, and Travis's like, that's me! Yes. <laughs> oh my God. And music this week was my sweet, sweet lover in song, so song, song, song. I know. Don't, it's don't Jody. That's Jody. What you got? No, no. Taylor do Swift, this. Take, shake it off. Yeah, she got it. No. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> Jody, you what? <laughs> As per usual, Abby in the newsroom had the shit, or at least she referenced it a lot. It's a concern for SA because we've seen gastro, gastro, gastro cases triple in the past month. And perhaps he had gastro, gastro, gastro. It's Jody and Hazy from Nova speaking here. How are you? What? Oh, you there, Andrew? Yeah. It's Jody. I'm on the, I'm on the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> Back to another Andrew who struggled with international sporting stadiums. 2013, Sachin Tendulkar plays his very last cricket match before retiring in Mumbai's Wankhead Stadium oh, against the West Indies. That's not how you say it, is it? <laughs> oh, I just read that blind. <laughs> oh, my gosh. 13, 24, 10, if you know how to pronounce that stadium, please. Oh, I don't think it's that. <laughs> oh, thank God for Manisha. Oh, buddy, can you confirm this? Uh, it, it's Wankhead Stadium, isn't it? Like, it's Wankhead. It, it is named after the architect who designed it. Speaking of rude names, a lady called her son Wash. There is a little baby Vajonica out there. Wait, so there is a classroom where the teacher's yelling out the roll every morning. Yeah. It's like, Dick, present. Present. Anus. Present. Vajonica. Vajonica. Seaman, here. Where is Vajonica? <laughs> Seaman, coming. <Yeah. laughs> so to all the hot roast chooks. Don't forget an acorn. Sexy chicken. <laughs> Swifty's boyfriend. That's me! <laughs> <laughs> And Warwick the Whiz Capper. Tight shorts wrapped round a banana. <laughs> Go off this weekend, kings and queens. All my love, Jody. <laughs> each other. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, I cut you off there. We get, al we get <laughs> sorry, along you go, you for go, you go. 97% <laughs> of the time. However, there's yeah. 3% and that's when we play song, 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 when you behave like an absolute tool that I don't like you. I'm very confident. Yeah. <laughs> and then when we go head to head in Battle of the Bangers. Yeah. Two songs. Yeah. Um, you just need to jump on the Jody and Hazy Insta page to vote for your favourite for the week. For the week in around half an hour's time, we're going to play the song with the most votes. Yeah, it's good. Real tight too. 13, 12 in favour of yours truly. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. I mean, this has been so consistently even. I reckon at one stage, though, remember you had about a five song lead early on? Mm. And then you just, you hit a real... Poor vein of form, didn't you? Yeah, according to you, I did. <laughs> and anyway. the people, but that's okay. Okay, that's stop. Okay. Can you stop talking me up? Like, it's just my ego can't take it. Okay. Um, talk up your song now. What do you got? Okay, so Robbie Williams will be here in, oh, I think, about nine sleeps time. Can't wait to see him on the Sunday night, Velo 500. It's going to be absolutely epic. And because I have devoured his documentary this week, I had no choice. I had no choice but to play his biggest hit of all time. Wow. Riverside, mother. Riverside, mother. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Wrong oh, one. Oh, she know what, Joe? It's only happened, I reckon, maybe two or three times. Yeah. Where we're in direct competition. And don't get it twisted, I hate you. Yeah. I hate you bad. <laughs> but this is such a good tune. Yeah, it is. Oh, my it? gosh. I remember the first time that I ever sang to a microphone. Mm -hmm. Footy trip in Thailand. And there was like a big karaoke sort of bar thing. And they let me go up and sing this song. Did they? I was nervous. Yep. I think I nailed it, but I don't think I did because I was pretty inebriated. <laughs> 
but seriously, this this is a great tune. The thought of you on a football trip in Thailand churns my stomach. <laughs> oh <laughs> what do you mean? God. Oh, my God. Oh, because of the food? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a bit spicy for you. spicy. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> anyway. Uh, good song. Thank you. Really good song. Yep. Um, and, of course, when you think of Robbie Williams, you think of Chingy. I like the way you do that right there, right there. I don't know why I'm going in this part. I don't know. <laughs> You've gone completely against your wife, Cara Hayes, who gave you a comprehensive list of great songs. <laughs> yes, she did. And what did she say to you when you walked in the house last night? She said, you might as well give this one to Jody this week. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Cara Hayes. So, for the sake of my marriage mm. and my relationship, please vote for Chingy right there. <laughs> Can confirm though as well. Oh, right yeah. now, in terms of percentage, it's sixty-one percent to one song, thirty-nine percent to the other. Mm. I bet you can guess which way it's heading. Yeah. yeah. Get ready to belt out a bit of Robbie at eight o'clock this morning. Rule <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> it. Oh, I need some last-minute votes, please. Jump online. Oh, now you just mate, you're just Jody sounding Hazy. desperate now. Stop please, it. Please, for God's sake, save my marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Fierce, fierce competitors in this space. You might even call us gladiators. <laughs> Musical gladiators. Mm. Shotgun being Russell Clowe. Yeah, okay. Maximus, Mismus, Meridius, it... Morpheus, whatever his name was. Okay. Mm. Would you want to be the current day incarnation of Russell Crowe or back in the day when he was ripped? No, <laughs> not current Russell Crowe. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Don't tee off. In good Nick Russell Crowe, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, and you can be one of the original gladiators of the TV show. You can be Taipan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what what right. did she look like? Uh, it was definitely a boy. Oh. All <laughs> <Okay. laughs> oh, good. Um, all right, welcome, camera guy Josh. Hello. Mm. Um, if we're shotgunning gladiators, could I be Kwame, please? Yes, yes you can. You can. Yeah. The Certainly. new version of gladiators. What yeah. a beast Kwame is. When's it. that coming back? I can't wait to see that. Yeah. It'll be fun. And that's coming up very, very soon. Um, two songs today, two very, very different songs. Um, this was Jody's song. <laughs> Theme as well, of course. Yep. Because Robbie's going to be here for Velo. Yes, yes. Sunday night. Next Sunday, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. But also, I am obsessed with his documentary yeah. that he's done from his bedroom in his underwear. Yeah, it's Rob Williams touring as we speak. Chingy, not sure when he's ever going to tour again. Like the way you do that right there, right there. Doesn't need to, mate. Yeah, 43-year-old, yep. which we recently found out his real name is Howard Bailey. <laughs> Howard. Howard. That's not very gang. Howard's a little less street than Chingy. Yeah, absolutely. No. Okay, Joshy. All right, Joshy, what do we got? How'd we go? Uh, hmm. There's a lot on the line here. As we all know, the winner gets Cara Hayes. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and just on that as well, really tight race, finish line in a couple of weeks, 13 to 12 in favour of me. Mm-hmm. So you need this, because if I take a two-song uh, lead, then you're in all sorts of strife. Yeah, mm. which is even more staggering why you went chingy, but anyway. I know. Uh, so much on the line. Not approved by my wife, Cara. It's Jody Oddy. Yes. Yes. I'm going to be honest with you. Yes. Not even disappointed, okay? <laughs> okay. Not even disappointed. Oh. It is a cracking song. It's, okay, turn this right up. Sing as loud as you can. Robin yeah. Williams. And through it, oh, she offers me protection. Wait a minute, Doc. Are you telling me you built a time machine? Hazy's on this daisy. Yep. <sighs> another day, another dollar. Let's just get through this. I don't even know what day it is. What day is it? Oh, hang on a second. Is it Friday? Oh, let's go on! Riverside, mother, river, riverside, mother. Yeah. Oh, past that. Hell yeah. Let's just really crank it up a couple of joints, Ooh. if you know what I mean. Whoa. whoa. Riverside. <laughs> let's take a little trip down Remy Lane. Let's go back to the 17th of November, 1999. Russell Crowe allegedly punched and bit a man on the neck in a foot bath brawl outside the shooter's saloon bar nightclub in New South Wales. If I had a dollar every time I had a few too many drinks and bit someone on the neck. Oh, I know. <laughs> oh, my gosh, I'd Wait, be able to retire early. All your mates are just like, Hazy, if we go out tonight, just don't bite anyone on the neck. Yeah. And just you wake up, once. You wake up and you get a bite mark on your neck. You're like, oh, my gosh, when did Hazy do that? Yeah. <laughs> like, I see a vampire. Enough's enough. I know. It's got to stop. Settle down. 
2003, Britney Spears, at the age of 21, became the youngest singer to get a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Mm. And what was ahead of her was just beautiful, non-controversial, wholesome lifestyle. Yeah, just went on to really settle down and live the quiet life. Yeah, now oh. she dances with knives. Um, around a stripper bowl. Around a stripper bowl. <laughs> Wearing not much. Yeah, she clearly yeah. needs a shower. And her kids are in the bedroom going... No. Oh, again. Stop. Gosh. I'm going to hit unfollow. <laughs> 2011, the X Factor group, little group by the name of One Direction, oh. release their album Up All Night in Ireland and the UK. You ready? Yeah. And count of three, your favourite member of One Direction. One, two, three, nine. Harry. Oh, really? Yeah. That's so obvious. Go on, Harry. Yeah, right. Okay. Oh, we'll do it again. One, two, three, Louis. Niall. <laughs> <laughs> no one's saying Louis, are they? Ever. Uh, number one song on November 17, 2016, Rockabye by Clean Bandit and Anne Marie. This is a beautiful song. Yeah. Genuinely love it. It's about a troubled young woman in Hollywood. Oh. Her name's Britney Spears. <laughs> <laughs> Beautiful Ryan Fitzgerald. Fitzy, how did you go with feedback back in the day in your footy days? I I tell you what, I copped it regularly. I had Rodney Ede at the Sydney Times. Who who Jody was known to uh, annihilate a turd sandwich before he yelled into your face. (laughs) And um, I I used to drop the ball regularly at training, Hazy, and he used to stop the training session and just berate me in front of everyone. Do you know, so I, I heard some of the best sprays from that man. Um, mm. Stephen Carey, who played for the Swans, who was a big centre-half forward, he had a bad game one day, and after the game he said to Stephen Carey, he goes, and Stephen Carey, 105 kilograms of fairy floss. <laughs> he said... He said, if I had a baseball bat right here in my hand, I would take it to your head right now. <laughs> yeah. oh my God. That is uh, Gosh. genuine Gosh. old school coaching. Uh, tell me if I'm wrong or not, and this is a, a bit of a statement without notice. Isn't there a story about Rocket spraying you and yelling in your face and you could see yourself on the big screen and your dad was watching or something? <laughs> oh, no. Look, do you know what? I've got to take this. It happened to me, but the, the, the great story, it was. It happened to Matthew Nix, the Adelaide Crows coach. He missed a tackle or something out in the ground. Oh. Rodney E pulled him off the ground and he's <laughs> on the bench and he didn't know what he was on the bench for and then he realised when the phone was handed to him that he'd missed a tackle. Um, it, it, Rocket didn't tell him that he'd missed a tackle. He basically called him a name that rhym- rhymes with Carmichael Hunt five <laughs> times. <laughs> And he, links, he looked up on the big screen and he was on the big screen on the phone to him being called a Carmichael Hunt. And um, he, he said he made out, he put a smile on his face and made, made out he was getting directions. So he's going, okay, yeah, so you want me to play up forward a bit more? No yeah. worries. Thanks, Rodney. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you're not smashing me at all. Rocket, absolute mad as a cut snake. Yeah. Um, Fitzy, during the week, uh, we spoke about some spoiler alerts because, mm. I mean, there's a bloke in your side of the neck of the woods, a, a New South Wales cop who pulled a gun on one of the other cops because uh, <laughs> he's his uh, co-worker spoiled potentially the Top Gun movie for him. You've been involved in the... Are you a, are you a movie spoiler? For, yeah, I am. Oh, I'm a no. One. I hate people I, like you. Yeah, I do it regularly, Jodes, and apologies for it. Oh, Actually, no. I did it the other day. How's um, a representative from the school um, WhatsApped me and said, oh, hey, Lenny's getting a gold award. Your son's getting a gold <laughs> award. Yeah. And I was like, awesome. Then he got home from school that day and I went, and what about you? <laughs> How proud are we of you? And he's going, what? And I said, the gold award. <laughs> and he goes, Dad, assembly's on Friday. Oh, <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> Which, actually, as soon as I get off air, he wh- he went in the State Relays this week, guys. How's this? Yeah, I heard about this. Yeah. So he went in the State Relays, and we didn't even know they won the State Relays, and we're all cheering and crying on the sidelines, and then we found out that they got a state record yeah. in New South Wales. Yeah. And then two days later, a dad rings us and goes, that state record was broken in 1978 by Bankstown. Guess what? That was the Australian record. The boys have broken the Australian record in the 4x100 wow. metres. So good. You're an athlete in the family. So oh. I've got to go. He's got an assembly this morning, and unfortunately, I'll miss it because I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> 
this guy. <laughs> uh, I'm going to break it to him. I'm going to rock up halfway through the assembly with a baton and go, here he is, that's yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> but, but didn't you call to tell him and he just gave zero Fs about the fact that it was an Australian he record? Does not care. <laughs> yeah. Does not care. Told him. And and this is the thing, Jody. I really find it hard. He's my child that doesn't... He doesn't like any affection at all. Can't hug him. Can't kiss him. I can't even film him anymore. Like I say, mate, come over here with your dad. Let's get a photo. No, nah, I don't want it. He's yeah. just, he's the opposite to Huey. It's well, hard. Well, if you need someone to fill the void, Andrew Hayes will do all those things <laughs> for you. I just get you Come over here with dad and get one more photo. Yeah. Come on. Come uh, on, Hayesy. Betsy, you give me a little kiss on the forehead. I will respond very positively, I promise. <laughs> I thought it was a bit weird tucking you into bed the other night. <laughs> I did appreciate the bedtime story, I know story, you though. love the very hungry caterpillar, but I'm not reading it again to you. Yeah, let's get the, uh, the rabbit story. Guess how much I love you. That's my favourite. <laughs> This is getting really weird. So weird. Because it's turned into a love story that's now father-son. What yeah. is going on? Uh, well, yes. I love you all the way to the moon and back. <laughs> I enjoy Cheese Fest this weekend as we well. Will. Yeah, that's going to be... Well, your show, I mean, sums it up. You guys are the ambassadors for it, aren't you? Yeah, it feels yeah, right, yeah. doesn't it? Cheese <laughs> <Jeez. laughs> Fest. Hey, are you going to come down for Velo and see Robbie Williams? That's going to be awesome. Oh. I love Robbie so much. The ultimate entertainer. Have you been watching his documentary yes. on Netflix? I'm obsessed oh. with it. What, what about the stage fright, Fitzy? What about oh, I, can't, I can't believe it, Jody. And when he, I didn't know he was 16 when he started with Take That. Yeah. Yeah. And he was so into himself and the boys were off him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Who would have thought? I, uh, I, I find the best bits is when he watches the old footage yeah. on a computer and then he has to shut the computer because he just can't watch it because yeah. he knows how much of a tool he was. Yeah, you're yeah. a cringe fest. Um, I love him. I, I was, we were talking about this during the week. Like, Can you imagine if someone came to you, Fitzy, and said, here's your life over the last three decades. Do you want to watch it back in film? No. No, thanks. No way. Yeah. No. Absolutely no. not. Not at all. Well, at least you had hair. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I'm not oh, having a crack. No, like, you know, because I I'm know. in the same boat. I look at some of the photos now and I'm like, man, look at my hair back then. My hair's yeah, so thin crazy. right now. Yeah. Uh, and then it, all the girls are swooning over Harry shaving his head at the moment. Mm. Mm. Been there, done that. I've had that <laughs> for the last 15 years. No one said anything to me. Uh, Fitzy, thank you so much. We'll let you get to your assembly now. Sorry to end that chat on a hair note. I'm sorry about yeah, that. Yeah, I know. That's all right. Love you guys. Love we'll you. you next week. See you guys. It's been a big show. It's been a huge show this morning. Um, and if you missed the code word for text for Tay Tay, I'm not going to give it to you now. Ooh, you have to check okay. out the podcast. Just tune into the podcast mm. if you're looking for that really, really exclusive code word. Yeah. We might be able to send you off to Melbourne to see mm. Taylor Swift for Who her heiress tour. Got to be in it to win it. That's what they say. <laughs> have a great weekend, everybody. See ya.